All right, so we've covered a lot. Loading images, getting portions of images, um, drawing them on screen, doing masks, um, accessing pixel values and filters. There's a lot of different things. Let's think about, um, uh, or I'll show you an example of how one way that we might put this all together into something kind of more planned, you know, that's not just a demo. Um, obviously this is just one of many, many ways that you could think about doing this. So um, don't let this limit you in terms of how you're thinking. I just wanted to show you kind of how we might, how we might put this together. So I've got a template started here, loaded my image. Um, I want to think about this, um, you know, how do I want to lay this out? I think I would like this to fill the screen. So I'm going to say create canvas window width window height. So this is going to um, fill my canvas to be the entire section over here. Um, and then, oh, and I want no loop here as well because I want to just make this static. Cool. So what I'd like to do is draw um, first Let's draw the image filling the screen. I think that might look kind of nice. So in draw here, I'm going to say image mode center. Um, again, this is going to draw it from the middle point and then the width and the height, kind of like a circle rather than a rectangle from the upper left corner. And then image, IMG. Um, and then I want this to be in the middle. And I want it to fill the screen. So I'm going to add these optional additional parameters that stretch it. So you can see it's distorting it, but we're about to do a bunch of extra stuff. I think this is gonna look just fine. All right, next I'd like to draw um, a whole bunch of random pieces from this image. Um, and I wanna do it in a spiral. So this is gonna use the cosine and sine trigonometry that we covered earlier when we did the uh, computationally generated mask. So for a spiral, I need a radius. I'm going to start it at 10, so it's going to be real tight and it's going to get bigger. And I need an angle, and this is my initial angle, and this angle is going to change over time as it rotates. And okay, so I've got that, and then I'm going to use a while loop. You could maybe figure out um, the a for loop for this, but I'm going to I'm going to use a while loop. So this is going to run. Um, on, uh, while the radius is less less than width divided by two minus 50. So my radius is going to start out real small. It's going to get bigger until it reaches 50 pixels less than the edges. And that's going to give me kind of a, a border, which will look nice. Then inside this while loop, I want to grab a random portion of this image um, that I can display on the screen. So my portion X it's going to be between zero and img.width minus a, a size that I specify. I want this um, to be like a specific tile size. So I'm actually going to make a variable up here. And I'm going to make it 50. And one of the benefits of putting it up at the top, it's easy to find. And I can change it and see how it changes my the look of my sketch. So I want my... Um, X portion to be, again, you know, because I don't want it to run off the edge of the screen. It's going to give me an error. So I'm going to make it between zero and the size of the image minus that tile size. And I'm going to do the same thing for Y. Portion Y is going to be between zero, IMG dot height minus tile size. Cool. Um, then I'm going to grab my section of the image. So portion is img.get. It's going to be from portion x, portion y, tile size, tile size. It's going to grab that random square. And let's do, well, we can't really do a sanity check here because I'm in a while loop. Uh, well, you know, I'll show you a way that we can do that. We can say image zero um, portion zero, zero, and then we can say break. And break, we haven't talked about break, I don't think, but break just quits the for loop or the while loop. It also will quit a for loop. Um, and in this case, you know, cause we're not changing radius, we would get stuck in this infinite loop and it would crash the browser and this whole thing. Um, but I just wanna make sure it's doing this right. So when I run it, it's a little hard to see. That's a little easier. Um, now it's drawing this square. So I know it's working. I'm getting that portion of the image. So I can delete this. Okay, so then next, um, 
I want to draw this in the spiral. So I can say push and pop. I'm going to translate to the center. I'm going to rotate by my angle, which I've already you know, I've defined up here, and that's going to change as we go around. Um, rotate by the angle. And then, so now I'm in the middle. Now I want to translate to the position in the spiral, out along the spiral. So I'm going to call translate again, you know, because we've moved to the middle, we've rotated by the angle that, you know, is in our, in our spot, and then we're going to translate out. You could also use the sine and cosine thing, but this is a little easier. Um, this is going to be our radius and zero. Remember, we need xy for translate. And then image portion is now at zero, zero. Super important before, before we run this is that we need to update our radius. Otherwise, again, we get caught in this infinite while loop. So we can say um, our angle is going to increase by six degrees. This is just a number I've tried that seems to work. And the radius by 0.5. And let's try running this and see. I'm going to move this over. Boom, crazy spiral. That's pretty cool. I like that. Um, now, there's a lot of ways that we could improve this, but I'm going to add a couple of things here. First thing I'm going to do is have um, a random. So I like that these all line up, but maybe I want more a uh, jagged look. So I'm going to add one more rotate. If my mouse will cooperate. Come on, mouse. There we go. Here, I'm going to do a rotate. Now that it's in its position, I can kind of rotate that little square. Um, and I can do it uh, randomly between 0 and 2 pi. And again, let's just run it and see. So now it's all broken up and kind of crazy looking. I like this. It kind of matches more the look of the image. And this is where you're like responding both to what you see on the screen, to the source image, to um, yeah, it's like this back and forth kind of thing. So I like this. I think one more thing I'd like to do is have it randomly invert these little, the color of these little pieces. So using the filters. So I can say if random um, is less than 20. So this will be a 20% chance that this happens. I can say portion dot filter invert. Now before when we did the filter, oops, um, we applied it to the whole image. But we can use this dot syntax to just do it to this little sub image. And that way, we're not inverting the whole screen. We're just inverting this little one. And when it's drawn on screen, it'll be inverted. So now it's got a 20% chance that we'll get this flip. And I like this kind of like the blues and purples that we get um, as a result and mixed with the greens uh, here. And you could try changing this you know, to make it more or less likely to happen. That looks kind of sweet. Um, yeah, a couple other things that we could try changing. We could certainly change the angle that goes around. This will basically be the spacing. So that's 12, you know, 25 now is much more spaced out, much less spaced out. But now you'll see that these, uh, the angle and the change in the radius are tied together because now um, it's moving out pretty quickly, but it's moving around much more slowly. So we might have to change this or maybe we really like that and we want to kind of keep it a discernible sp uh, spiral which is also kind of cool actually i like that and i'm going to go ahead and put this back another thing that we could try changing is the tile size and this is where you come up with something cool and then you play with the features with the parameters and see how it changes it so these little 10 pixel doodads you know that really starts to look super different and so what I would recommend as you're doing this kind of thing is be sure to save images and save versions. So if you've got this like tight version that you really like, these like little small tiles, save it, make a copy of your sketch, or certainly write down the parameters so that you can come back to it and see what you like. Um, yeah, this is starting to look kind of cool. And oops, uh, honestly, this is, I spend so much time doing, this is what creative code really kind of looks like. You're playing around, trying stuff until you come up with something you really like, and then you explore kind of the features and the parameters. But um, again, this is just one tiny possible way that you could do to approach um, a collage. I'm drawing images on the screen. I'm stretching them. I'm also getting 
proportions of images. I'm using matrix transformations. I'm using filters. Um, the only thing I'm not using here is pixel values, but you could try adding that here as well. Um, you know, we could also apply, gosh, this could just kind of <laughs> start going crazy, right? Um, we could filter it after the fact and then do it again. You know, I don't know, maybe that doesn't look that great, but um, you could start thinking about all these different ways that you could keep like adding and adding and adding stuff. Um, so don't feel like your, your collage has to look anything like this. This is just like one kind of potential way of doing this. So um, yeah, in the next video, we'll talk about what the homework is for this week.